Hello and welcome back to Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition with me Barden, the nameless one, Dacon, Anna and Mort. So uh, we took care of uh, Mantuok and now we're going to um, head back up. So I want to go back up to the town for two reasons. First because I want to talk to those guys that, um, that Dacon doesn't want me to talk to. And the second reason because um, I want to, I want to sell some of the stuff. Like we got a lot of stuff there that we can sell. Gone. So I want to get rid of it if I can. So let's talk to you and see what we can sell to you. Endure. Let's bring everyone over. In enduring, grow strong. I'd like to buy something. I'd actually, like to sell something. Let's, let's sell that. The Grimoire of Pestilent Thought is actually 3,000 coppers. That's tempting to sell that, I have to say. Um, on Charm, no. She's got a bunch of crap though, yeah. We can't sell them back the uh, poison cheese, unfortunately. Maybe we can give that to someone else that we don't like. Um, bronze bracelet we sell. The silver bracelet I want to see if it actually does anything. So uh, let's go to there. Let's give that to him. So he can he can wear that on what slot? Here? No. Oh, and bracelet. Okay, so. Give it to him then. Okay. I wonder if they actually do anything though, because it'd be nice if they told you if they have stats on them or not. It's kind of like um, a bit of a blind kind of thing. So I cannot part with that. I don't want him to use it and not know what it does. I thought he could equip it. I cannot part with that. I cannot part with that. Okay, so he can't move it. She needs a lot of equipment as well. And he's all these slots, but he can't actually put anything in them, which is annoying. Okay, um, I hear so your words. All right. Let's go over here. Your reasons, let's put your will be done. done. Back on there. And let's put you over here. And go talk to this chap. So this is like the enemy of Dakon's people. So where is he? There he is. Yemen. Yemen, come here. The man has rough, leathery skin with a pale yellow cast and gaunt features. His face is angular, his nose is small and highly placed, and his ears taper to points. A tracery of tattoos and scars cover his body. He's dressed in strange, gaudy leathers that look more ornamental than combat ready. His eyes are like two small black stones, and they track you as you approach. You are the human seeker memories, he says flatly. I can help you. You're a git Yankee, aren't you? I have the pleasure to be of that people. His voice is flat. Do you wish my aid in recovering your memories? Who and what are you? I am Yemen. I am Githyanki. I am a Githyanki angler. My people are the undisputed masters of the astral plane, where the gods go to die and the memories of the dead float like leaves in a pool. My duty is in retrieving the memory cores of the dead and gleaning them for information. I can locate your memories. You have only to pay the price. What price would that be? It is a matter of a mere few coins. The price is negotiable. I ask for 100. You will determine the value of the memory I find and pay accordingly. Sounds good. What do I have to do? If I am to bait my hook for your memories, I will need some of the memories you currently possess. I also require a place of concentration and quiet. If you will follow me, we will journey to one such place and I will make you you hold once again. 
we go alone with no companions. Okay, um. So it maybe will be a trap, um, but maybe it's not going to be. So do we agree and go and see what happens? Okay, so taking us off here. Yeah, look, there's other people here. More, yeah, lots of people here. The Yankee mood has turned into something much more ugly than the previous, his, its previous arrogance. Now, human, drop your painted shield and tell us what you have said and done for the Gizera, you good dog within Sigil's wall. Weren't we going to look for my memories? The only way you shall travel to the astral plane is in change, human. You have one more chance to tell me what you have said and done for the Gizari within Sigil's walls. I will not tell you. Then you shall die. He draws his weapon to attack. Um, why sh should I let them kill me? Fight or let them kill me? Um, there must be something about this if it's an option. So let's see what it does. Yemen's blade slashes across your throat and you fall to the ground bleeding. They stand over you and begin to speak again. Did he truly know nothing, al -Midil? His words were those of an enemy of the people. Even were they not true, we have cauterized his ignorance with death's iron. Let us leave him here for the collectors to scavenge. We have gathered enough information on the Gaziri dogs for, the, for this trip. They shall lose another fortress before the seven day is out. The walls of Vistagor shall fall. My journal. If you believe our knowledge is sufficient, then we shall go. Gather our warriors and let us join our war party in Limbo. For the child. Okay, so I guess we had to die in order to hear them talk about that stuff. So are we going... Oh, look at that. You just all bound right. it up. Nothing wrong with him at all. Okay, so I guess we need to warn Dakon or the other chap over here. So there was definitely a reason for him uh, not to want us to talk to the guy, but at the same time... Um, at the same time, he... Oh, here's Kina. Okay. At the same time, he... Um, or we gain some knowledge that we wouldn't know known otherwise. You are not known to me, nor that I have no words for you. Are you familiar with the fortress of Vistagor? She tenses slightly. Oh, so she. Okay, sorry. How did you come to know that name? A group of Githyanki are planning a raid on the fortress Vistagor. Within the seven day, they are on their way there even now. Her eyes dart across your face. You can feel her noting you. Know that you have the gratitude of the Gitzari people. This shall not be forgotten. Sunset over Handar, traveler. I must warn my people. Good Updated luck then. Farewell. Done. Okay. Uh, so can we maybe talk to Endure. you? In enduring gross, I hear your words. Dialogue with you. What is your will? Dakon turns to you, his eyes like polished coals, his blade mirrors his eyes for a moment as you dress him, then he nods. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. I will hear you. Okay, so... You said I gave you the Circle of Zertamon, Dakon. Yes. In knowing its words, I knew myself. Okay, so I guess there's nothing... I want to then uh, have some dialogue with Mort. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? I want to ask him about... Um... Oh, look, he's got um, Ravel. Okay, you said you're a murmur, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I remember as a floating encyclopedia. You put information in, you get information out. I see, I had some other questions. Um, where's the one about her? Ah, here it is. What do you know about the Night Hag, Ravel? Or I guess it's Ravel because it's unraveled the mystery. Well, well, she's a Night Hag and she was definitely barmy enough to make you immortal, of all people. I mean, she could have chosen me. Mort rolls his eyes. Still, anyone addled enough to lock blades with the Lady of Pain isn't someone we really want to find. I see, I had some other questions. Um, let's show more. How did you die, Mort? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me after I died. Even, it is, even if it is life as a floating skull. I mean, I could have been worse. It could have been worse. What happened to your body? Uh, I don't know, alright? It's just gone. More glares at you. But don't think I miss it. Because I'm happy just the way I am. And I don't need your half-wit judgments or snide remarks, alright? I see, I had some other questions. Uh, no, actually I don't. Alright, done. Um, so... We've got... That's the tower, isn't it? But I don't think we can go into the tower. So let's go deliver the ladder then over here, I guess. Or whatever it was. There was a ladder, wasn't it? I think something is attacking us, or trying to attack us at least. Yeah, um, well, let's take care of you. This is a bit of experience. Or well, let's talk to you then before we go. You see a burly board looking guard. State your business, please. I have a message from Ke for Keldor from Guildsburg, the auctioneer. Thank you, sir. You'll find him in the great God's Godsman Godsman Hall. He opens the gate for you. Thanks. Okay, so Done. that was easy. I wonder what would have happened if we had of um, just tried to walk in. What would we kick our ass? Okay, so we're inside here. Um, let's check the outside first. Or anything interesting. <laughs> Get out of the way, please, guys. Okay, so into the foundry we go. Foundry worker, worker, watchman. Guard, watchman. Look for anyone with a distinctive name. This is a very interesting place. Again, like these, um, like kind of 2D or 2.5D, I guess you'd probably call them, uh, type games. The way they can impress upon you the scale of things is so different than 3D. Because when you're like 3D um, and it's like third person over the shoulder mode or uh, first person, you, it's very hard to see the grandeur or something it's only when like you get up high and you look down on things and like that's what that's what we get all the time with, with these type of games because the camera is always up high and it's always kind of like wide lens as it were okay so there was a lady here who had a different name but I think I lost her while I was talking about 
Ah, here's someone. It's not the same person. But we do want to talk to you. No, we want to talk to you. Come back. Wait, where did we go? Oh. There we go. Okay. You see us. Um, slab stomach man with thick arms and a scraggly beard. He smells as if he hasn't washed in ages, and his breath doesn't do much for your breakfast. He's in the process of ordering around subordinates as you approach him, and he deals a quick cuff to the ear of one of them. He turns to face you, hitching up his belt. What do you want? I have some questions. You want answers? Like what? Who are you? Tilden the Grey, supervisor for this yard. My job is to make sure my laborers get their job done and to make sure people like you don't distract them. They work little enough as it is, the little sods, and they'd manage to lose the rest of the day in idleness if I weren't here. I'm tough, but I'm fair. Ask, uh, ask anyone. Why did they call you the Grey? Because I'm covered in soot most of the time from those blasted furnaces. It's a nickname my laborers have given me. Out of affection, no doubt. No doubt. That's right, they do. They know if they don't, they'll get what's coming to them. I see, I have other questions. Tell me about the godsmen. They took me in and trained me to be what I am today. And I got to thank them for that. They took my raw talent and shaped it into skill. I tell you, I'm a favorite of the factors. And someday he'll show everyone just how important I am in this organization. They tell me that everyone has godliness in them. It's true for me. I think I'm closer than most folks to tell the truth. That gives me the right to act like a god and to expect total devotion from any inferiors. I'm learning to take power and move mountains with belief in myself. When I rule the cosmos, you can bet I'll remember every one of the Burks who stood in my way. That's interesting. I had some other questions. So he really does have a god complex. You want answers like what? I need to use the forge. Can he give me some more? He looks you up and down carefully, considering and says, You want to be a smith, eh? Can't say the fire to do much to skin like that. Take it then, and don't get in the way of my workers. Good day, sir. Farewell then. So... What was that for then? So he gave us... What did he give us? It's over here. Iron ore. Okay. Well, maybe that's something that... Um, oh, there's this other lady. Lisa Teal. You see a short woman with slight horns in her forehead. So is she a thiefling then? And ears that curve sharply back on her skull. She smells faintly of sulfur, even over the reek of the foundry fire. Greetings, what can I do for you? I'd like a tour. Ordinarily there's nothing I'd like better. Sadly right now we're a little busy. Come back in a year or so and I'll be happy to provide one. What's going on? We've taken a huge and very secret contract. One that is taking up practically all of our resources. We maintain a smaller operation for the day to day items for our other orders, but right now the foundry is devoted to fulfilling our contract. Don't bother asking about it because I won't tell you. You seem very firm about this. Very well. I had other questions. Let's see. Um, who are you? I am Elisa Teal, supervisor for this area. This area being the main foundry area of the Great Foundry, where much of our current public work takes place. The foundry is larger than this, of course, but we have a large contract we're working on and we've been sworn to secrecy. So most of the work area is off limits. My apologies. I understand, I have some other questions. What's going on here? We've taken a huge and very, very secret contract. One that's taking up practically all our resources. Okay, so I think she's told me pretty much all of that. Or, okay. What exactly do the godmen God's men stand for? This is both a communal and individual faction. And there are variations on the team depending on whom one speaks with. But the basic gist is that life 
nay, all existence itself, is a test of sorts. All things that arise test us, and how we react determines how we move closer to the true understanding of everything. We seek the truth, truth behind the multiverse, and it's apparent to us that ours is the right way. I see. Ah, uh, how do I join? Go speak with Calder or Jurian in the meeting hall, through the door on the right wall. Thank you, I had other questions. Do I have other questions? What can I get? Where can I get those items to work the forge? If you can't find them lying around somewhere, then you'll have to buy them from the clerk, for a nominal price of course. I see. Uh, thank you, farewell. I think we're done with her for the moment. So let's find, so there's a door there, we, we came in where, did we come in there, or did we come in down here? I think that's where we came in, so I think that's the door she was talking about. So let's head in there. Yeah, Godsman's Hall. Um, we got Sarosa. Let's talk to Sarosa. You see a young woman. As you approach her, her eyes stare directly into yours. You get the uncomfortable feeling that she's not just examining your eye color. Her gaze seems to penetrate far deeper than that. Greetings, stranger. How goes your day? Well enough. I would like you to answer some questions for me. What answers do you seek, Halfman? Why do you call me Halfman? I call you Halfman because I cannot see your spirit. All other mortals who pass through my life show their spirits to me as a shining spark or a smoldering ember. You show nothing at all. I call you Halfman because I cannot see your spirit as I see those of others. Whether this is because you have no soul or because you have transcended, I cannot say. One way or another, you are but a Halfman. What the other half is, I cannot say. I see. Who are you? I am Sarosa, daughter of Sandos, one of the factors of the godsmen. Can you answer some questions for me? Tell me of your family. My brother Saros is a child of the foundry, yet I fear he has never embraced the philo philosophy of the believers of the source. My father is a factor here and his travels have led him far from the foundry and into realms most mortals never even dream of achieving. Tell me more of your brother. Saros is a brash, impulsive lad, easily given over to his manhood. He is eager to prove himself equal of anything on the plains, full of the aggression of youth. I believe he feels himself more sensate than godsman, further vindicating my belief that the sensates are the most immature of all the factions of Sigil. Why are they the most immature? Why? Why are they the most immature? Because, like children, they do not understand that there is more beyond the world of the senses, beyond what one can see, hear, taste, touch, smell. Look around. Sorry, look around you. You are in the outer plains. This is belief made solid, but that does not mean this seemingly rough matter can be comprehended by the senses. This is belief. No mere physicality can match it. I see. Uh, tell me of your family. I think we're done with her for now. Yep, looks like it. Okay. Um, so we got some godsmen there. We've got another door here, let's go there. If those guys don't go crazy if we go in. Oh, they don't? Good. Okay, so who is in here? Foundry Smith, Foundry Smith, Smith. I guess they're all going to be Smiths. And let's see. There's Saros, let's go talk to him. And who's that? That's Keldor. That's who we have to give the message to. But let's talk to Saros first. You see a sandy-haired youth. He's on the cusp between adolescence and adulthood. 
and from his eyes it looks like he's trying to be an adult as possible without having the slightest idea how. In other words, he seems innocent. Hey stranger, what can I do for you? You can answer a few questions for me. Tell me about yourself. Me? I'm Saros. I grew up around here. Got to run through the foundry, playing with stuff. I like pretty much everyone here, except for Thildon. He keeps saying I'm not raised right and that my father is a poor parent. All I know is that Tildon's the biggest sod I ever met. I'm sure I had a few other questions. Ask whatever you want. Tell me about the great foundry. I grew up here. I played in the main foundry area and ran through the barracks. It stinks and it's loud and people can be like Tildon, but it's still home for me. So everything is kind of revolving around him rather than kind of answering our questions. Um, tell me more about the people here. They're smiths and workers. I think they mean well, but they're all so earnest and boring. They need to liven themselves up a bit, like, say, the sensates. You like the sensates, huh? They know how to live life. They know what it's all about, not like these people. They keep pretending there's some big noble purpose to it all, but I don't see it. My sister says that life is more than our senses show, but I don't see how she knows that, since all she knows is through our senses. I don't get why people make this stuff up. Who's your sister? Sarosa? She, she can look at someone and see what needs adding and what needs taken away. I don't know how she does it. My father always said it was something about her ascending to another level. He said she was born a godsman. Interesting. Let me ask you some more questions. Uh, tell me of the people here. Um, I think we're pretty much done with him and we're also done with this episode. We'll talk to um, Keldor next time and we deliver the message to him and then we figure out what we're going to do from there. But um, for now, it's goodbye from um, myself, the Nameless One, Dakon, Anna and Mort and Saros who's just walked off. And we all really do hope to see um, you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.